Okay, let's take a quick peek at how we can get John the Ripper up and running and how to use it to crack a password um, that we have obtained in a hash dump or in a Windows SAM file. So I'm starting from scratch. Um, I'm in Docker, which means um, I need to get some basic stuff installed before I can do anything. apt update is the unix command that we're going to be using to make sure that we're always looking at the latest version of software um, and in that case next uh, would be our um, installation of some of the dependencies that we need to build john the ripper from scratch um, so in this case i'm going to install the c compiler with its other essentials and uh, git to be able to pull the source code and some support libraries that will take some time to come in, um, but not terribly long. So we can just wait for that for a second. This is one of the benefits of using a Debian based system like Debian, uh, which I'm running here or like an Ubuntu system. And it has a very well integrated packaging system um, and makes it fairly easy to maintain systems and patch them when needed. Okay, so all of our dependencies are done. Now, we're going to have to organize ourselves a little bit um, to make sure we can find these files again at a later moment. So the first step we're going to do is create a directory in which we are going to create our source code. And then we're going to make that directory active by changing our directory into it. Next, we can clone the latest version of a very extensive um, implementation of John the Ripper. It's community supported. It has a lot of different ciphers um, and other formats in it that it can use that's why it's so large the standard version of john the ripper is fairly limited in what it can do but here we go so looking at what we got we got a directory called john the ripper which we can now make active by typing cd space john the ripper now this is a linux system so we have to be case sensitive means that the j the t and the r are all uppercase and when we take a look at what we got here, um, we'll see that there's only three subdirectories. Remember, by looking at the long representation, anything that starts with a D is a directory. Um, with some documentation such as readmes, but you know who reads those after all? We're going to go straight in, make the source directory of John the Ripper active by typing cd space src. Once we're in there, we can start setting the sources up for compilation on our platform. We do that by running the dot slash configure command. Um, and that will make sure uh, that everything we need is in place and it will tweak the way that the C compiler gets invoked, uh, etc. This is a very common build process for free open source software where you download an archive, you extract the archive, you configure the sources and then you build and install them. So now that we have configured everything, nothing broke, you know, there's no error messages, um, all is good. So now we can just type make. Now the make process is going to take a while. This might take easily five to 10 minutes, depending on how fast your machine is um, or how much resources you have assigned to it. It might look like it is very repetitive, but it really is not. Every time that you see the screen scroll up one step, we are on to the next file um, that is getting compiled. Um, there's a lot of individual files um, that make up a larger software product. And that's just so that we can organize our code and find it again. It also means that it is much easier to do incremental compilation. You know, once you deal done with, for example, in this case, dynamic big crypt, you, know, you compile it once and then you don't have to touch it again uh, for the next run that you do. All of those command line arguments that you see after each invocation of GCC um, have a specific meaning. Most of those are put there by the configure script that we just ran. But if you're a computer scientist, it doesn't hurt to, you know, take a closer look and see exactly what each of those command line argument does. Not necessarily that you're going to be writing these from scratch, but it does help you include your understanding of what the system does and why it does 
what it needs to. I'll let this run um, so that you can get a better feeling for what it looks like in real time and I don't cut away and say, okay, now it's done. And you have no idea if it took like, two minutes or 20 minutes. My guess is it's going to take uh, two, maybe three minutes to complete um, from the point that we started the compilation process. One thing to point out is that, um, let me pause it for a second, at least the scroll buffer, there we go, that the dash O is an output parameter. So in this case, we're creating object files. In the next stage of compilation, once all of the object files have been created, we're going to link all of those object files and create them into libraries and or executables you'll see that the pattern changes when that happens. It uses different invocation of the C compiler. Um, and that's usually a sign that we're nearing the end. The linking phase that follows compilation is usually very, very quick. So John the Ripper is an um, offline password cracking tool. Um, and that means that you need to have a list of at least one encrypted password um, somewhere that John can attack. It's not going to, de oh, here we are linking, they're almost done. It is not going to decrypt the passwords Instead, um, it is going to create that rainbow table approach where it's going to take words from a dictionary, possibly compile variations of that dictionary, and compare the encrypted or hashed passwords to what you have in your uh, password file and see if there is matches that way. Okay, well, the output completed. It tells me that it was uh, successful, make process completed. So now we have downloaded configured and compiled our sources, the next step in the process is to install, which is as simple as typing make install. It was a very quick process. And we're now installed. So what does that mean? Well, we can now go back out of the one level back up in the tree to the main John the Ripper directory. And we go into the run folder because that is where the executable was put. We can now type dot slash John. And indeed, we are now running John the Ripper um, and it is not complaining, which means it is happy. Um, notice that I'm writing dot slash. That is because in a Unix system, unless you change it, any command you run has to be in the command path and the current directory is typically not in that. So in the current directory, we are looking for the file called John. Now John has a number of uh, things it needs. It needs two main inputs. The first input it needs is a list of passwords it could crack. And the second one is a list of passwords that need to be cracked. So let's get those first so we can demo this out. Um, we have um, a nice large um, file um, that is basically an accumulation of known previous um, passwords that were breached, um, which is nice because that gives us a place to start from. Um, one of those files is called uh, rockyou.txt. Um, let me just go grab it. Um, copy link. And we can download it using the wget command. And we're going to paste it in here. Now, this is one of the places where we could have um, found it. So hopefully it still exists. Yeah. Um, but it's available in many different places. It's not just here. So a couple things to point out. One, it's a large file. Um, it takes a while to download. Um, 
The other thing is it's called rockio.txt.bz2. Uh, BZ is a uh, encrypt uh, compression um, algorithm. And in this case, uh, this is a compressed file. So we have a 58 megabyte file, which is compressed. If we're going to decompress that, and I'll show you in a second when it's done downloading, that file is going to be significantly larger. So this is a lot of passwords that we are going to be testing. And by we, of course, I mean John the Ripper. So let's finish out this download. You don't have to download from where I downloaded it. If you just Google quickly for rockyou.txt, there's a plenty of different uh, places where you can get it. Okay, we're done. B unzip to rockyou.txt, and we'll unzip it. Um, you only have to do this once, obviously. Once uh, the file is uncompressed, it's ready for you to use. And just to give you an indication, um, it is large. Let's count the number of one, two, three, one, two, three. So this is 140 megabytes, uh, looks like, of text. 134 megabytes. Or if you prefer that, um, looking at it like this, now I counted the number of lines in that file. So that is one. So it's 14 million, uh, 300,000 some passwords that are in here. Keep that number in mind, 14 million. So good, now we have one. We have the RockU password file that John the Ripper can use. We also need to have a um, password file, which we can call anything, but let's just call it Sam. Um, oh, I don't have Sam, okay. Um, and now we have a file called Sam, and that's uh, the encrypted password file. This is the Windows format, so the first field we see is an, uh, um, an a landman hash, the second one is an LT NTLM hash. Um, and if you have seen this before, uh, you know that this is the empty password, uh, the empty field, so we're really only looking for the NTLM hash to break that. Now, we're ready to go. We can now invoke John. We can tell it that the word list we wanted to use is rockyou.txt and that the password file that we wanted to crack is called Sam. And it's going to very quickly complete. It's going to say, hey, target user has an empty password. Well, yeah, because I didn't want it to do the landman one. I wanted it to do the format equals NT, the NTLM hash. So you know, I have to tell it that it can't read my mind what I want. So instead, um, we're just gonna change the command line invocation to John, wordlist equals rockyou.txt and format equals nt. This was very, very quick. Um, you know, we see the number here. Um, what does this mean? It, this is kilo passwords per second. So now we're looking at about 11 million passwords per second that were tested. Um, and it did not find anything. Well, that is really sad. Um, but it does mean that all 14 million something uh, passwords were tested by John the Ripper um, and that they were found to be not matching the hash that we had. Now, John is a smart uh, little tool. It also knows that we have these password complexity requirements where we ask people to, you know, add a number or an uppercase character or a special character. And what John does um, very well is out of the box, capitalize on humans' predictabilities. So it can add the rules files, the rules to that. And rules are configurable. You can change your own rules, although it is a little complex, um, but it will calculate a number of variants for every word in its password file. And when we do that, um, we immediately see it's going to take quite a bit longer um, for this to complete. You know, it's not done yet. Um, it's not hanging, it's actually doing something. But fortunately, it's telling me, you know, press almost any other key than Q to see what's going on. So I just hit enter. As right now, it's telling me it's tested about 21.58% of all passwords and their variants. Um, so we're just gonna let it sit for a while. And hopefully, after a little runtime, um, it's gone, something's gonna drop out. Now, of course, we're only running against one hash, which makes this a relatively quick process. Obviously, if you have 100 hashes that 
John needs to test, it takes a hundred times longer. Um, so it's always trying to balance that. How big of a words file do I want to use, a dictionary, and how many hashes do I want to target um, before you're going to see results. Oh, here we go. It just finished. Target user. Um, had as a password Super Mario, um, uppercase S, and the zero instead of an O. And so there's that. We just executed an offline password attack using John the Ripper. Um, based on the rockyou.txt password file. Now, if I run this again, um, John the Ripper is not going to do this again. It's smart enough to say there is no hashes in there that I haven't already cracked, but it's also not showing you what you already have. That you can still make it do by just asking it to show all the NT hashes in the SAM file, and it'll come back and say, yeah, of course, here, target user, this is his password. So keep those two separate. And that's it. That's all there is to running John the Ripper.